Hi, my name is Alain Moussi. I play Kurt Sloan in the new Kickboxer Vengeance, starring Dave Bautista and Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I'm about to do an interview with Great North Wrestling. Watch. Okay, so how long have you been involved in martial arts for? Um, I started training in martial arts when I was 10 years old, so that, that dates me, which is horrible, but whatever. It's, it's 25 years now. 25 years I've been training. Um, started in jiu-jitsu, Japanese style jiu-jitsu, and then later on got into uh, kickboxing and Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well. And you were also a trainer in martial arts as well? Uh-huh, yeah. I started teaching when I was, uh, I was 15 years old, when I first started teaching. Uh, kids classes first and then adult classes. And then when I was 23, I opened my first school uh, with a friend and we started teaching uh, kickboxing and jiu-jitsu and uh, I was owner of, uh, of that martial arts school. How did you get involved in the movie business? Um, Interestingly enough, my friend, my, my friend who was champion uh, in karate, who was world champion in karate, his name is Jean-François Lachapelle, introduced me to a stunt coordinator who was also world champion in karate, Jean Frenette, in Montreal. And they were prepping the movie Immortals. Um, I met Jean around the same time, started training with the stunt, uh, the stunt guys. It happened that they were looking for guys that were six feet, uh, could fight for, um, for this movie. And what happened is Jean, as a stunt coordinator or a fight coordinator, what he does, he shoots these fight concepts to show the director and make sure that the director approves the style and the types of fights they're gonna, they're gonna design for the film. Um, and I happen, he used me to play the hero role in those previous. And the stunt coordinator, the American coordinator saw it, he's like, okay, well, who's this guy and, and can we use him? And Jean backed me up and he said, yeah, I think he can do it. And finally, that's how I got in and I ended up doubling the lead actor, Henry, Ca Henry Cavill, for uh, Immortals. So that was a good experience then for you, that first movie? You know what, it was incredible. It was, the, it, what a way to jump into the deep end uh, in the stunt business and just get right into it in the nitty gritty because uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it, most of the time when you first get into the business, you get this one day role where you go in, you might get shot or whatever, you, pl you day player. But this, I was on for six months. So we trained for two months prior to starting the film and everything from acrobatics to weaponry uh, to stunt reactions and design the fight. So I got to do that. And then I got to perform on this huge set with tons of people, um, which was incredible. And for me, uh, for my stunt career, I was exposed to a lot of stunt coordinators and other stunt men that, were, that had been in the industry for, for a long time. And I was able to display my skill in front of them to almost like a, it's almost like a live audition where they can see, okay, can this guy do it? Can he perform? Does he behave well on sets? So that opened a lot of doors for me. And you did some stunt work for the Marine 3, which starred a professional wrestler, The Miz. Did you have any contact with him when you were doing stunt work on that? Movie? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like, I met Miz on the first, I think, first day of rehearsal where we rehearsed this big fight. I mean, obviously, Miz is a wrestler. He's very physical. So he does everything. And as a stunt double, um, sometimes, depending on who you double, you might end up doing tons of stuff or you might end up coaching the actor to do all his own stuff. And in Miz's case, I mean, Miz is, you know, he's a wrestler. He knows how to fall, he knows how to fight. So he was able to do, I guess, probably about 99% of all the physical stunts in this movie. Um, I think they had a double for some driving stuff or whatever else was mechanical. But still, man, obviously he wants to do it all, and it, which is great, you know, it's, it's awesome for the movie. He's a super guy, very cool guy. And you also worked on X-Men Days of Future Past and had an award nomination f uh, as part of the ensemble for Best Stunt Ensemble in a Motion Picture. Do you have any memories of working in that movie? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was on there for one major scene. It was a scene at the beginning of the film where Mystique comes in and she beats up a few special ops guys. And I was the first guy to get knocked out. Um, I come in and I get punched in the throat right away. I fall back and that's the end of me on that movie. So I was there for about... Um, I think six, seven days shooting that scene, which was great. Uh, got to meet Jennifer Lawrence and she was awesome. She was really fun to work with. Um, and then a whole bunch of cool stunt people. I mean, there's a, they're, they're, they had a great stunt team on that film. And I think that's what gave the award is the fact when you have an ensemble award, it's for every stunt person that worked on this film. Um, they had amazing doubles um, on there and just everyone who did a great job and I think kudos to the stunt, uh, to the coordinator and the second unit director as well who put, take all this talent and put it all together in this uh, cool design. Right? Is, is there any chance you're going to work on another X-Men movie in the future? You never know. Hopefully as a, as a character. <laughs> that's, the, that's the hope. 
Now, uh, probably your biggest opportunity is uh, in a movie that's coming up. It's already been filmed, but it's uh, going to be released, I believe, in September 2016, uh, Kickboxer Vengeance. Do you want to give us a brief uh, idea of what that movie was like to film mm -hmm. and uh, how you got the role? Well, Kickbox Revenge is, is uh, for me is incredible because it's my my opportunity to really shine as a lead actor, and uh, I got to give it to Dimitri Lokotetis, who's the uh, who's the producer who found me, who saw me doing some stunt work, a fight, actually a fight skit, and said, "Hey, I should take this guy and do something with him because he's got what it takes." And it, as talented as I could be, it takes somebody like him to say, "I want to give you a shot," which is amazing, you know. Uh, and to, I started training in martial arts because of Van Damme movies. I, I was a fan of Jean-Claude's early on. And to be able to do this movie, Kickboxer, which was one of my favorites of all time, is incredible. Not only am I doing this film, but I'm also doing it alongside Jean-Claude himself, which is even better. You know, it couldn't be better than that. So uh, the experience of working with Jean-Claude is incredible. Imagine, like, you know, you, you, you've been looking, let's say, for example, Hulk Hogan was your childhood hero in the wrestling world. Well, then this, the first day you get, into, you get into the ring and you're there with Hulk Hogan. That, that, it's like a hurrah moment. You want to stop. If you could only stop it and step away and look at it for what it is and just have that moment in time would be amazing. And I had that moment on Kickboxer Vengeance. I mean, I was there with Jean-Claude, but there was this time where he was kicking towards my head, and I was just dodging it. And I, I mean, they called cut, and I just said, whoa, hold on a second. I gotta take this moment in because Jean-Claude is kicking at my head. This is like incredible right now. So, no, just in, in a very cool experience. And I guess for this film, the producers, the director, um, really wanted this to be an authentic martial arts film. So, not, so they, they took the time to cast it with people that could do the martial arts. There's myself, there's Jean-Claude, Dave Batista, who plays Tung Po, the bad guy, and Dave is in, incredible. Dave is awesome. Not only is he a, a great wrestler, but he's also he's a martial artist. He's trained in Muay Thai, he's trained in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, he's had an MMA fight. So, Dave was coming in there with a lot of baggage. It was great. And we had three days where we just pounded the hell out of each other. And it was awesome. For me, I was a fan of Dave's watching wrestling. I was a huge wrestling fan as a kid. Um, and then growing up. And while Dave was on top, I was still watching a lot of, a lot, a lot of wrestling. So for me to meet him in person and to actually be performing with him was just an incredible experience. Was he a nice person to get along with? Easy person oh, to get man. along with? He's like the gentle giant. <laughs> he's, he's huge. And then when he talks to you, he's got a lower voice. He's like, how's it going? And I'm like, whoa, this is like, he's so low key. Uh, he's always, every time we'd come in, he'd discuss the scene. And he's very intelligent, very intelligent, Dave. You see it right away, the way he analyzes things, the way he analyzes what we're about to do and makes sense of it. And uh, I, I, I learned a lot from him on set. I tell you, I learned a lot. He's from really talking good. to him, do you think he's going to remain mostly in the movie business or do you think he may go back to pro wrestling? We didn't actually, we actually talk about it, but honestly, I think he will. I think just being with him and looking and observing his approach to his acting, he's not just going in there, you know, for fun. He's, go he's having fun. But he's a serious actor. Like he comes in prepared. He comes in and he wants to do this role. He, he he's ready for the next role. He's he's yeah. He he's not just coming in there as a novelty. No no. He is a serious actor. And sometimes you might look at a guy like Dave and he's big and he's got the muscles and the tattoos and everything. And people will be like, oh, he's just a goon. Oh my God, he's the furthest thing from it. He is a serious actor. This guy. And I think he's going to go a long way in his career. And for Jean Claude Van Damme, uh, you mentioned he was your hero. Were you nervous around him and did he, did he do a good job of kind of being down to earth and making you cool with working with him? Yeah, Jean-Claude made me, made me feel really comfortable, honestly. Um, I, I had met him on a previous project years before, just quickly. Um, so we hadn't met once before. And then now, as soon as he got the role, he called me. I was in New Orleans. Now he wasn't there yet because we were going to shoot his scenes in Thailand. Um, so he called me and he started asking me, How's it going? And what are you shooting today? And you want to discuss it, see what you're thinking. And he just started coaching me and helping me out and just being there to discuss things and want to be involved. Um, he was like that the whole way through. He was so nice. He was so giving. And I think he gave a lot of himself to this movie because it meant a lot to him. Um, so no, I, the, the experience of working with Jean-Claude was nothing but wonderful. And I have to ask what your favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme movie is. My favorite one? 
That's t such a tough question. I, I'll, I think the one I've watched the most, and probably that would be my favorite, the one that stands, is Kickboxer. More than Bloodsport and more than Double Impact. But Double Impact, I think, was like a cl very close second. You know, I love Double Impact, really. But Kickboxer was the one that just fueled me. It was the one that got me going. You know, it's uh, the end with Tung Po, is like, when he says, Miley, cut the ropes. It's like, whoa, that, that moment you're like, what's he doing? And all of a sudden that kick comes up, boom, in, in Tung Po's, like just at that moment is one of my favorite moments of all time in these movies, so. And how was it working with uh, Gina Carano? Gina is, how can I describe Gina? She, she is, it's gonna be a funny word, she's a sweetheart. That's what I say, because I was say that she is so sweet, so nice. You would never imagine she's a fighter because she's so nice. And she came in there and obviously plays the bad girl in this, which is awesome, but she gives it, this sweetness to it, which is even worse, you know, because she comes in there with a beautiful smile and the eyes, and she looks at you and you're like, oh, this girl's so nice. And all of a sudden you realize, no, she's not. And she plays it up so well. And I, no, and that's on set. Off set, man, she is awesome, a great, like I, can, I hope, like I consider her a friend because she's just so, such a great person. And we had a good time, a great time off set, yeah. And what was it like working with Natasha Hopkins and Christina Durden? Working with Natasha and Christina was just great. I mean, uh, I met Natasha right away, and uh, most of our scenes weren't action scenes, we were acting scenes, which is great. And she gives so much, she's got so much energy, works very hard. She, her character, Lara, I mean, it's, it's a hard character. You, gotta, you, gotta really, you, you have to put a lot in there. And, and she did, in her training for all our fights, and then we had a scene together, which was so much fun. But this girl has amazing energy. It's so much fun to work with, so much fun to work with. And Christina, I had actually had some interesting scenes with, um, where we interact, but she obviously, she's evil, I'm good, you know, air quotes. But, and we, we had a lot of confrontation together. And wow, this girl goes all in. I mean, I had to really even, grabbed by the throat and tweet and she just went for it. It was so much fun. Very tough, very, very tough, uh, tough fighter. She's awesome. She looks amazing on screen. She really takes this, this the Capri character and brings it to life. I mean, it's really cool. The whole cast of Street Fighter, I have to say, I had such an, an amazing time with them because they're so committed and they just, they're fans. They're fans of this kind of genre and they just want to go all in. However, ridiculous you could say a costume is or whatever because they weren't but it's easy to say oh well this is kind of cartoon but no they owned it and they made it look amazing all of them Mike, Chris, Christina and uh, Natasha it's awesome and you worked with George St. Pierre what was that like uh, you're from the same area as him so I mm -hmm. assume you may have met him before over the years yeah I met, I, I met uh, George St. Pierre training in Montreal I was training with uh, Fabio Holanda at the time in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when I was there we were training with him and George was prepping for a fight. This is pre-championship. Uh, pre he was uh, prepping for his next Matt, uh, fight against Matt Hughes. And um, Fabio came out and he's like, oh, do we need some sparring partners for uh, George and Patrick, Patrick Cote at the time who was training with them? And, um, and he's like, would anybody be interested in rolling? And I'm like, my hands went up right away. I'm like, I have to, I had, this is my opportunity. I'm gonna roll with George and Pat. And it was like, wow, this is cool. So I ended up rolling one round with, the, with Patrick and one round with George. And that was the first time I met him. And I met him a few times over the years, but never, never spent a lot of time. There was a quick meeting, right? Um, but when he came on set, obviously, he knew who I was from common friends. And then we just started talking and we hit it off right away. We had a blast on set. We had a, a really good time. And it's funny because we both speak French. So normally, like naturally what happens on a, on a, on in this kind of a group, everybody speaks English, but we're both speaking French. So as soon as we're together, it, it's all French and French. And people are like, what are they saying? What are they saying? And as soon as somebody else pops in the conversation, it goes to English naturally. But every time we're together, Jean-Claude was the same. As soon as he was there with me and George, it was French. And all of a sudden, whoops, back to English. It was. Uh, no, we had this awesome chemistry together, and uh, yeah, no, he's a he's a great guy, a really great guy. And do I dare ask how he is as an actor? You know what? I think George is awesome. You know why? Because he doesn't try to be what he's not, and that's why that's what makes him awesome. He's just there, and he 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 just gives it whatever whatever he's got very naturally, and has fun with it, and that makes him to me that makes him great. If he was trying too hard, trying to be something he's not. I don't think it would come across that, that well. Now the way he comes, he, he looks great on screen. It's really cool. 
And it's being debated constantly everywhere if he's going to return to MMA. Uh, what's your opinion from knowing him a bit? I think, you know what? Um, and again, it's not something that I can confirm or say. This is like my, my own personal thoughts on it, is I think he would go back because he, does, he loves it. He just loves it so much. He talks about it all the time. He loves discussing fights and all that kind of stuff. So he never got out of it because he didn't like fighting. He loves it. So I think if it was the right fight at the right time, you'd see him again in the octagon, guaranteed. But it has to be the right fight at the right time. It, he won't go back for just for nothing. You know, he'll go back when it's, it's the right fight that's going to be something epic, I think. That's, uh, that's when you'll see him again. Is there any reason in particular that you never went into MMA in your younger days? Um, well, you know what? It's funny because when MMA was getting started, I was training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at the time, and I was a good striker. Um, so I actually was training in MMA, and I had a lot of friends that wanted to get into it, so we started training. And I, at the same time, I was really interested in movie, in, in, in film work. I really wanted to do film. That's the, that, that was the number one for me. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be an action actor. So. It was at some point you train to be an actor or you train to be a fighter. And I chose the acting. I trained to, okay, I got to train stunt work. I got to train what it is, or I guess to perform. And that's where I put all my time in performance as opposed to, to fighting. And it made sense to me. I don't, you know what? I, I really had to have a gut check because it's one or the other. And I'm happy I chose what I chose. <laughs> it's great. And for people that don't know, overall, there is more money in acting than fighting, unless you're one of the top stars in MMA. Is that right? Um, it hurts less. <laughs> it hurts a lot less pain, I'll tell you. I mean, more money. It depends if you're getting the roles. It depends, it depends on so many factors, right? You can have starving actors as well uh, and as starving fighters. Or, but I think the chances, I, I guess, maybe there might be more opportunities and a lot less less painful, I guess, than, than fighting. And it's already been announced there's going to be a sequel to The Kickboxer that you filmed. Uh, are you going to be involved in that sequel at all? And can you tell us anything about it if you are? Yeah, yeah, I am. I guess, definitely. I'm, I'm already, I'm prepping for it now. So when this comes out, I don't know when it's going to come out yet, but you know what? I'm, I'm already there. So uh, I am. I'm the lead actor again in the sequel. This follows Kurt Sloan's story and with a new, new opponent, uh, new, very interesting characters in the story. I mean, the opponent the, that's been announced is the, uh, the mountain, Half Thor, the uh, strongest man in the world. So he looks like a great guy. Can't wait to, to see what we come up with to, uh, to film together. But uh, definitely, you know, the, the, the sequel, I, the script is really cool. The story's awesome. And I think uh, action fans are going to get are going to get what they want. <laughs> Guaranteed. Will, uh, will Jean-Claude Van Damme be involved in the sequel as well? That hasn't been announced, so I, there's not much I can say about it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. So you play Charlie Nash in the new Street Fighter Resurrection series. Can you tell us about that series and uh, your role in it? Yeah, I play Charlie Nash, who is a character actually that was in the, the, the early games that was dead for a while and then comes back from the dead. It's really cool. Um, he was actually Guile's mentor in the stories or I guess in some iterations of the story. And I'm, I'm there with Mike Moe and Chris Howard, who were the original, who played in the, uh, the Assassin's Fist series, which is on, on Netflix UK. Um, and it was just so much fun. It was really cool. It's, uh, the story itself was made because they wanted to, uh, almost like a prologue to the new video game, which is Street Fighter V. Um, and it was designed as a four episode series for mobile content on uh, Verizon Go 90. And this character, what's cool about this character that I play is he's an anti-hero. He's, he's got, he's, he's for good, he has a mission, which is a good mission. However, he's gonna do whatever it takes to, to, to accomplish his mission. So, whether that's to kill a good guy, well, he'll do it. If, it's, if the good guy gets in his way, it doesn't matter. He's in the way. Whoever's in the way is in the way. So he's gonna take care of him. So it's not this guy who's all, all good. He's not a Captain America at all, you know? He's, he just navigates this line between good, bad, but his ultimate uh, mission is for good. So anyways, it was uh, cool. I got to have a very cool look and um, play with the pitch of my voice. It was, it was awesome. Building this character was so much fun. And thanks to Joey Ansa. Joey Ansa is the, uh, the director, and he's the one uh, that kind of created this uh, Street Fighter world and, um, for, the, for the live action. And uh, it was so much fun to be able to work with him. 
And if we want to watch that, I understand it's out already, where would we watch it? And it's out in the US uh, on Verizon Go 90, uh, which is an app you download and then you can see mobile content on. But I know they have a plan for international distribution, so it will be out internationally soon enough. I don't know exactly when, but I'm sure they're going to make sure everybody can see it at some point. Now, uh, you mentioned before that you were a wrestling fan growing up. Uh, do you want to just tell us who your favorite wrestler was when you were growing up? Oh man, okay, so I have to say for the longest time was the Ultimate Warrior. When Warrior came out, I loved Hogan. I loved Hogan, like I remember um, it was uh, WrestleMania V, Hogan Macho Man, right? So Hogan Macho Man are fighting and I was like, whoa, this is incredible. But when I saw the Ultimate Warrior for the first time, I said, that's the guy coming in, boom, boom, shake the ropes, and he was just wild. I loved it. So Ultimate Warrior was like my number one for a long time. Then I loved uh, the other uh, the other wrestlers I really liked. I enjoyed Shawn Michaels because he had when he had the sweet chin music because it was a kick. So obviously I had to get behind that. Um, Bret Hart for the longest time as well. I was a huge fan of Bret Hart, and um, and then The Rock, Dwayne Johnson when he came out as The Rock in that era. Oh my God, he was the man. He still is in my eyes, you know, he's still the man, but I was a huge fan of The Rock. And we have to ask you this, because it's great North Wrestling. You trained uh, Hannibal a little bit in martial arts. What are your memories of that? Okay, so this ultimate, I, I did train Hannibal for, for a while, and I remember this moment. We're grappling, and as we're grappling, I'm like, man, this is a big guy, I gotta try something. And it's like, okay, so I tried a triangle choke. My triangle choke's pretty solid. So I triangle choked him and I had his arm right in there and it was locked solid. All of a sudden, I feel myself going up in the air. I was like straight up over his head in a matter of seconds. And I'm like, okay, I hope he doesn't slam me. I was just hoping that it wouldn't happen. But no, he put me down, it was awesome. We just kept on rolling, it was awesome. He was such a nice guy. And uh, for young martial artists uh, who want to be an actor in the future, um, what's your best advice for them? I'm, you know what, actor, whether you want to be an actor, stuntman, work in the film industry, and I guess this applies to anything else you want to do, but in this specifically, train. Go out there, train, get the training. Whether it's physical training you want, well, become the best at, at it. If you want to be a serious, dramatic actor, Go into, go into training, you know, train with actors, train with coaches, learn the craft, whatever you're going to do, and keep on training diligently. As then you make contacts and you work your way into the industry. Because the day the opportunity knocks, you want to be ready. A lot of people, what they do, they wait till the opportunity presents itself and all of a sudden now they're like, oh, it's a possibility, so I'll start training now, it's too late. You have to be ready the day that somebody says, hey, you want to do this? And you have to say yes and go. You have to be ready and confident to be able to do that. The only way to do that is to be training already, to be ready for that day. So that's, that's my message for everyone. And finally, where can we follow you and uh, stay up to date on your uh, acting uh, endeavors? Okay, well, to stay up to date with me and to follow me and everything that's going on, you can go on Facebook. You go, it's Ali Moussi Online on uh, Facebook, my fan page. And then there's, uh, I have, Ali, it's all Ali Moussi. It's A-L-A-I-N-M-O-U-S-S-I -S -S is at in front of that. And uh, I have Instagram, I have Twitter, and I have my Facebook, which I'm really good. And I'm trying Snapchat. I'm doing my best. I'm not there yet, but you know what? I'm trying. I'm doing my best. <laughs> and do you have a message uh, for your fans to close things off tonight? Um, I say thank you very much. I have tons of followers on Facebook and Instagram and everything. So I thank you for following my career. And I, all I want is to be able to deliver. And I'm working hard. I'm working very, very hard to deliver for all expectations. But thank you very much. I appreciate the fact that you are even paying attention to me. So thank you.